Welcome to this session. We're looking at May 2016, question number two. And we're told that Wekal Enterprises is a small retail business dealing fast moving consumer products. The Revenue Authority suspects, as a key word, it suspects that the business has been filing fraudulent returns and has requested for financial statements from the business. The business provided the following details for the years ending 31st December 2015 as well as 2014. So we have the income statement for 2015 there. Very well. Then we have the statement of financial position. So this will be the opening position at the start of 2015. This is a closing position as at end of 2015. Great. Then you're given additional information there. And you're required using suitable computations, uh, confirm the accuracy or otherwise of the taxable profit of worker enterprises for the year ended at 1st December 2015. And then part B is a different aspect. It looks for some theory aspects, okay? Great. Now let's deal with the first part where we are asked, using suitable computations, confirm the accuracy or otherwise of the taxable profits of worker enterprises for the year ended that first December 2015. So my approach in the tax paper is I first start by looking at the notes, the additional information, okay? So it's only after I have worked out what they mean that I'll now be able now to answer the requirements of the question, okay? Great. So we first quickly read through note number one, turnover and purchases were inclusive of VAT. So it means that we have to exclude the VAT aspect. Uh -huh. Note number two, the turnover excludes cash sales. Uh -huh. Great. Uh, so the business paid the following expenses out of cash sales. So it means that first we get the total sales. We have to add the credit sales to the cash sales. Okay. Note number three, saying that the bank balance is included in the cash and cash equivalents. The following details were included in the bank statements. So you're given all these uh, amounts there. Great. Note number four. The following assets used by the business were not included in the assets register. Uh -huh. So these are things that have to be factored in. And then you're told that the revenue authority has established that the statement of financial position forms a good basis for recomputing the taxable profit. All expenses are to be adjusted on the basis of the statement of financial position. Great. So that is going to be our basis. Okay. So let's now look at the first note. We're told that turnover and purchases were inclusive of that at the rate of 16%. So that will be our working number one. Let's deal with working one. So working one, we're looking for our credit sales. So we are going to use the statement of financial position. So credit sales will be obtained by looking at the movement in the receivables. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll just go here, look for the receivables. There they are. I have the opening receivables, I have the closing receivables, 740, and then I have details relating to the cash that has been received from receivables. And that will normally have been uh, given to us somewhere here. You can see this, you know, number three, receipts from debtors, 50, 890, okay? So uh, using my timeline approach, I put the opening receivables. So that's what I'm looking at. At the start of the year, the receivables were 1640. At the end of the year, they were 740, 400. And then I know that the cash that we received from the receivables is 5890. And of course, when you receive cash from receivables, it reduces the receivables balances, isn't it? So this cash we've gotten from our uh, note number three, isn't it? This one, 5890. Great. Um, so the question is, what is our sales? The sales, the credit sales should increase our our debtors balance. So we put it as a positive X. So now it's just a matter of doing some basic math. 1640 minus 5890 plus X equals to 740, 400. So we just solve for X. And we get that X is okay. Great. Now going back to working one or note one it says 
that the figures are inclusive of VAT and we know that we should exclude the VAT. So it's a matter of just saying that this amount which you have been given here basically represents 116% and we want to know the amount exclusive of that which is 100%. So what do we do? We cross multiply. So it means that all we have to do is times over and this basically gives us okay great let's go to the second aspect of note one so we have dealt with the turnover the credit sales okay we'll leave the cash sales later so here the second one says and and purchases were also inclusive of that so how do we get the purchases again we'll get the purchases by looking at the movement in payables you can see the accounts payables here so we have the opening position we have the closing position okay and we have information about the amounts that we have made to creditors here 2460 so i'll do the same sort of working that we've done there so working to to help me with my credit purchases so there goes my timeline opening payables is 15.28 closing and the cash that we paid out so the question then becomes what is the purchases x so and then we say 1528 minus plus x equals to 979200. So we just solve for x and we get that it is okay. Remember this amount is inclusive of VAT. So the VAT exclusive amount. So this time we don't have to do all this tabulation. All we can do is just use this uh, formula, eh? 100 over 116. So the VAT uh, exclusive amount is 100%. Which basically gives you, okay, So we are done with note number one. Now, while we are still there, we can basically get what our cost of sales are. Because by reading through, we can identify that there were no cash purchases. Okay. So, and since at the end of the day, I'll want to know the taxable profit, which is made up of the profit um, that is attributable to the entity for tax purposes, I have to work out some cost of sales so let me just do that right now so working number three cost of sales will be made up of opening stock which we'll get directly from our balance sheet our opening inventory is 2881 and remember our closing inventory is 4389 so just do this opening stock to these i add purchases which i've just worked out working number two and then i less my closing stock This gives me 138,986. Okay, great. Now, while we are still there, can we also move on to the next node that tells us something about the cash sales? So, node number two says that the turnover excludes cash sales. 
And during the year, the business paid the following expenses out of cash sales. So we're not told anything about any cash that remained after you've made the payments out of the cash sales. So we'll assume that all these expenses that were paid from the cash sales must have been the total amount that we had received from the cash sales. So working number four, which is the cash sales, will be taken to be equivalent to the expenses that we paid out. So I'm just going to add them up, all these expenses, 48 plus 142 plus 94 plus 36, okay? So cash sales, I'm saying, is equals to 48 plus 1428 plus 94, 6 plus 366 which basically gives you 322,000 remember that note number one had said that all sales all of the turnover is inclusive of VAT so including this cash sales so I have to get the VAT exclusive amount also so VAT exclusive is 322,000 times 100 over 116 which basically gives you 277,586, okay? So now I'll basically add these cash sales to my credit sales that I had gotten earlier. And then from those total sales, I'll deduct my cost of sales that I have worked out in my working three to get my gross profit. And then unless allowable expenses, I get the taxable profit, okay? Great. So let's go back. Let's go back. So we've dealt with uh, that part, yeah? Now, remember that out of these expenses that were paid, some of them may be allowable, others may not be allowable. So let's read three and, through and see. So we told that the return of excludes, yeah, okay, the, during the year we paid the following expenses of the cash sales. So the question is, is postage and uh, telephone acceptable? Is it an allowable expense? Yes, it is. What about school fees? School fees, as a rule of thumb, is not, okay? Repairs and maintenance is allowed. Insurance is allowed, okay? So it means that the allowable cash expenses are going to be the numbers excluding the school fees, okay? So let's just note that down, working number five. The allowable cash expenses are basically telephone, and postage of 48 then we have repairs and maintenance of 94600 and we have insurance of 36600 okay so we have uh, made the mention that school fees is not allowed okay Okay, great. So with that, we are done basically with node number two. We can go to node number three now. What does it say? It says that the bank balance is included in the cash and cash equivalents. The following details were included in the bank statement. So we have personal expenses, general expenses, rent and rates, higher purchase interest, payments to creditors, and receipts from debtors. Uh -huh. So the first thing that we note is that these personal expenses here, not allowed. General expenses as a rule of thumb will be allowed. Rent and rates as a rule of thumb will be allowed. High purchase interest will also be allowed. Now the catch is this, that these are cash transactions, okay? Because this is the cash that transacted from the bank. This is what went through the bank statement. However, we should look at the expense based on accruals method, meaning that we need to also look at these numbers in conjunction with the balance sheet. Are there any accruals that we notice? Okay, so uh, let's go to, our, so we were at working number five, so this is now working number six. So working six, the first thing we have noted is that the personal expenses, expenses, are not allowable 
that is the first note okay that that one aha uh -huh. then now we move to the general expenses now for these general expenses yes we paid cash of 792800 but is there any accrual or prepayment i can see this is a general expense prepaid here it is so the start of the year it was 98 at the end of the year it is 178 so i'll have to factor in these two numbers 98 178 and what we have paid through the bank 792 so again using my timeline approach of course some uh, students prefer using t accounts but I, i try to keep away from the t accounts this is not an accounting paper yeah? so this is tax so um 98000 178 200 the cash that was paid through the bank was 792800 so the question then becomes what is the pnl figure so 98 plus 792800 minus x equals to 178 200 so we get that x is 712600 okay and this one is allowable okay sorry this is working number 7 yeah on general expenses so this is allowable we move to the next item which was rent and rates of 68400 so we go and check whether there was any prepayment or accrual on the rent and rates and yes I can see we have both a prepayment prepaid rent and rates as well as an accrual rent and rates so it means that we have to factor in both sets this set as well as this set so factor those four numbers there and also factor in the cash paid of 68400 So this becomes our number 8 rent and rates timeline so the prepaid amount 246 the accrued amount 36000 so i'm just going to have them having different signages at the end And then now I deal with what was paid. So I ask myself what is the P and L figure then? So just merge them all. So when I solve for x I get that x is 8200 and this one is allowable yeah back to the note we were at higher purchase interest 29600 so let's just check whether there was any higher purchase yes i can see this here the interest due at the start was 28 at the end was 16 so so 28 16 cash that was paid so what is the expense 28 minus 29 6 
plus x equals to 16,000. So when I solve, I get that x is 17,600. And this one is allowable. Great. So we're basically done with note number three. We had already uh, earlier on dealt with creditors when we got the credit purchases and the debtors when we got the credit sales. So there's nothing else to adjust there. So I move to my uh, note number four. We are told that the following assets used by the business were not included in the assets register. Mm -hmm. Now, if they were not included, it means that there was nowhere and tear that had been computed. So what do we need to do? We need to compute wear and tear on this. So let's look at uh, com uh, computers. Computers are in class 2 at 30%. Fax machine is in class 4 at 12.5%. Saloon car is in class 3 at 25%. Remember that there is usually a trick with regards to saloon car. Saloon cars are always restricted to a maximum of 2 million. Okay per vehicle we have a delivery van again class 3 at 25 percent then we have the computer software which has its own rate of 20 percent okay uh -huh, great remember all these are usually given to you on the first page of your exam question yeah? all the rates but you have to know what goes into which uh, class so let's compute that we were at working nine so now we are now in working number 10 working 10 so where and tear allowances i'll not bother with uh, having the table you know the the way we normally do the table class one class two class three class four etc i'll not bother with that for now i'll just come and uh, basically just uh, compute for each of them okay so let's go back there. So I'm just going to list all those assets. So they're on computers. 368,000 at 30%. Then you have the fax machines. 120,000 at 12.5%. Then you have the saloon car which we had mentioned is going to be restricted at 2 million at 25%. And we have the delivery van, which was 720,000 at 25%. Then finally, we have the computer software. One fifty thousand at the specialist rate of 20%. So let's just work uh, these numbers out. So this is 110,400. This is 15,000. This is half a million. This gives you 180,000. And this gives you 30,000. Okay. So let's just go back. So we are done with node number four. Great. So uh, basically we're done with all the adjustments. Let's now just quickly uh, go through the income statement and see what are the other items okay, that might be there. So turnover, we shall not use whatever they have. We'll use our figure. Uh, cost of sales again, we shall use our figure. Proceeds from sale of furniture, this is a capital gain, is not taxed, so we are going to ignore that. Uh, capital gain on sale of plot, again, we are going to ignore that. So all those things have no impact on us. Okay, so let's uh, go on. So you can see this purchase of furniture, which is 360000 there. So let's look at that furniture and see. There was that purchase, but what was the value as at the year end? And I can see here, as at the year end is 348000 Now, the thing you have to remember is that uh, wear and tear allowances are normally based on the written down values as at the end of the year, not on the 
balances at the start of the year. So what I shall do is I shall compute wear and tear on this asset, this furniture. Remember, all these other assets that we are told about here in the previous note, note number four, these were omitted, so they were not even appearing. So let's now compute on that furniture. That becomes our working number 11. Working 11, wear and tear. Allowance on furniture. So remember the keynote, we use the year end values. Okay. So from our statement of financial position, let's just check that number again. 348,000. Remember, furniture is in class 4. So we use 12.5%. And this gives me 43,500. So we proceed back to the P&L. Uh, general expenses, I think we have already worked them out. Rent and rates, we've already worked them out, so we, do, we don't have to redo this again. Yeah? Depreciation is not allowed, ignore. Customs duty is not allowed, ignore. Higher purchase cost, again, we have already looked at a higher purchase interest, so we don't have to use that figure. The only thing that has been untouched is this, salaries and wages, okay, of 1680. It was not mentioned anywhere in uh, the accruals or the prepayments here. So it's important that we just make a special note about that. So working number 12, salaries and wages, which is allowed, is the amount of 1680. Okay, so we're basically done with our entire income statement, yeah? So we'll ignore all these other aspects of the income statement that was provided, and instead we shall use the figures that we have worked out ourselves down here, okay? Let's now also look at the statement of financial position, just to identify whether there is any item that may have been omitted. Aha, uh -huh. so furniture, we've dealt with that. There's this motor vehicle, aha, uh -huh. we have not worked on it, so let's... Determine the wear and tear. Remember, this motor vehicle is very separate and distinct from the omitted assets that were given to us in the other note. So let's compute that. We were at working number 12, so this is working number 13. Wear and tear on vehicles. This is other than the omitted vehicles, okay? So the year end value times 25 percent gives you for 15,000 let's go back and see is there any other expense that needs to be factored in we've already factored all these cash and cash equivalents is nothing there capital net profit all these don't affect us we have dealt with that that aha uh -huh. so basically we, we are saying that we are done okay we can we have derived all the figures that should be used in our computation of the taxable profit, isn't it? So let's determine what is the taxable profit or loss. Let me just change my pen color. So let's start with our sales. Remember, we have credit sales and we have cash sales, isn't it? So we go to our workings. Credit sales, what did we have from working one? It was 4302069. Then we had the cash sales which we had worked out let's see where we had worked it out yes here it was in working number four the VAT exclusive amount was 277,586 
let's add them up now from that we less our cost of sales we had already worked out our cost of sales in working number three and it was 138986 This gives you your gross profit. Now from here, we have to less the allowable expenditure. So we just go through the notes, starting from the first one. So we've dealt with credit sales credit purchases which we are using uh, in our cost of sales we're done with that so we go to allowable cash expenses so we have telephone 48 repairs 94 and insurance 36 all this is from working number five so let's just list them down the cash expenses Telephone. We're done with working number five. We go to working number six. Personal expenses not allowable. We've factored that in. General expenses seven twelve. It's from working number seven. We move on. Working number eight, rent and rates, 8,200. Then you go to higher purchase interest, 17,600. That is working number nine. Then you go to working number 10, which is on wear and tear allowances, 110, 15, 500, 180, and 30, that is under working number 10. So computers. Fax machines. Saloon car. Delivery van. and computer software. So we're done with working 10. We go to working 11. We have wear and tear allowance on furniture of 43, five.
and then you have salaries and wages working 12 1680 Then we have wear and tear on vehicles for 15. That's working 13. So that's that. Now all I need to do is just deduct from the gross profit, I deduct all these allowable expenses. And I get my adjusted taxable profits. So have we answered the question? Let's just check. Using suitable like, like computations confirm the accuracy or otherwise of the taxable profit of worker enterprises. Yes, we have done that for full marks. Let's now look at the second part, the theory part. It says, summarize five types of preliminary information that you may require from the business in order to further ascertain the accuracy of the taxable profit. So basically, what uh, are the supporting documents you'll ask for to ensure that the numbers that you've used in your competitions are valid? Uh -huh. So it's very important. So, for example, and they are very easy to get, but just looking at my computation here, what are some of the things that I can uh, request for? Uh, let me just use a different colored pen. So, if it is for general expenses, what can I ask for? Or even the cash expenses, I can ask for uh, payment vouchers. So that I am sure that these numbers are correct. Yeah? Same thing will appear for that. Um, what else do we require? If you're talking about rent and rates, are there contracts that show that this is the amount that you should be paying, blah, blah. Then higher purchase interest, I'll also ask, do we have any contracts for these higher purchase? Uh -huh. And then if I'm looking at the wear and tear allowances, I'll want to know what are the supporting documents for the acquisition. For the purchase of these assets isn't it so that we know are the values that we used in our computations valid etc isn't it yeah and then uh that one applies also for that for salaries i can ask for details on, on their payroll okay there are so many uh, aspects that you can look at yeah if it's, uh, for example, about these uh, sales that we know we have, as well as our cost of sales, the purchases aspect, we can decide to ask for the ledgers and decide to ask for the purchase and sales ledgers so that we can uh, verify that the amounts that were recognized uh, as sales and purchases are actually correct, okay? You can also decide that you'll ask, for example, for other information that... Uh, details of transactions of the various transactions that you are happy that none of them are personal that everything that has been excluded was excluded rightly and that everything that was included in our competition was actually um, included rightly so that is all that was required of you even for the second pass so that you can get the uh, maximum marks that basically brings us to an end of the